Howdy y'all and welcome back. Be Gunners episode 24. So we are talking about long guns now. And if you have decided to get yourself an AR for your first long gun, you will have a choice to make. Do you just go to the store and buy one off the shelf? Or do you build your first AR? There is actually sort of an in-between, and I think it's what most first-time builders go with, and that is to build out your lower and then kind of punt and just buy an assembled upper. And this is what I would recommend because it allows you to get all of the little bits and baubles on the lower that you really want instead of spending the money to buy stuff that you don't really want, but you're just kind of like taking because they're what come on the gun. Now, if money is no object, like if you got it like that, then just go get the cool Noveski or the whatever, like that's fine. Building traditionally has been a way to save money, or at least it used to be once upon a time. You would build an AR because you could do it and get a better end product for less money than just buying off the shelf. I don't know that that's entirely the case nowadays because manufacturers have started offering like mid-tier packages that are pretty squared away and turnkey. You just buy the damn thing and go out, put an optic on it and run it, right? But I still think there's some value in assembling your first lower so that you understand what's going on inside of the lower. So for instance, I'm a big fan of the Bravo Company Mod 3 grip. So if I go buy an assembled, you know, a pre-built turnkey AR, and it has some other grip on it, I'm immediately buying this guy, right? The trigger is very often not that great. And so then I'm gonna wanna upgrade that right away. So then I'm, there's that expense and I'm gonna end up having to change it out and learn how to put it in myself anyway. Um, some of the, you know, like your mag release is, if it's mil spec, it's like, I mean, it works, but it's nicer to have a little bit nicer one. Uh, buffer tube, right? So I mean, it, uh, your buffer and spring. So it goes on and on. And if you just do a little homework and spend some time in the gun forums, watch some videos here on YouTube, you can sort of dial in what you think you probably want and just buy it once instead of buying it and then rebuying it. And you're going to put the time into it later anyway. So, you know, there's something to be said for just get it, start operating it and whatever. But I do like the idea of putting the time in to learning what all of these things are and then learning how to put them in. And that way down the road, if something is giving you trouble, you will know how to take it apart and then put a different part in that might work better for you. When it comes to uppers, I have seen a lot of new AR owners who put together their own upper have problems. <laughs> and where it's really gonna come into play is gonna be your barrel nut, right? You didn't torque it down properly and then you're out at the range or doing your thing and it starts coming undone on you. And so there's something to be said for just buying an assembled upper. And now obviously it's not gonna have your little uh, extra accoutrement on there, but uh, like this one, Bravo Company, just just get the damn thing and it's gonna work for you. It's, it's gonna be your uh, gas port and tube and everything. It's all gonna be dialed in and just work. So, a lot to be said for that. The big investment, tools-wise, you're going to need a vise and you're going to need a torque wrench. Is that that big of a deal? Well, if you live in an apartment, you may not have a convenient place to mount a vise, and it is just extra money that you're going to have to spend up front that you didn't really have to because you could have just bought the assembled upper. When it comes to assembling a lower, I'm going to take this over to the table. There are two tools that I highly recommend. Let's go check them out. 
All right, so if you're brand new to ARs, I'm gonna try to do this in a way that doesn't anger the YouTube gods, but you have these two pins mounted to the lower. When you mate the upper receiver onto the lower, you press these two pins through, and there are lugs on the upper that fit right in here and down in here, and they lock, these pins lock the upper to the lower. When you're assembling a lower, you have to install these. <laughs> and if you've spent any time online in gun forums or Facebook groups or anything, you've heard jokes about flying detents or detent springs. So on the front up here, you have this channel. So inside of that, you have a spring. And then behind the spring, you put a little metal detent. And that detent rides, let me see if I can get the light to hit it into this channel right here, okay? And that is what gives you resistance. So you have a little hole right there. And so right now, that little metal detent is resting on the other side of that hole, giving it, see how I've got some resistance there, and I pop it through and it locks into place. Getting this assembled can be a bit of a headache, hence the flying detents and detent springs. And what I recommend is picking up a tool, something like this deal. And the way this works is you slide it into place. I'm not going to disassemble mine to show you, but you slide this into place and bring it just through on the other side where it lines up. So that hole right there lines up with the channel and then you slide the spring in and then the detent behind it. And then you take this piece and this pushes the spring and detent into that channel and then you turn it. And by turning it, you're giving this smooth portion is now mated to the detent with the spring behind it. And then you come along with your actual pen and push it through and it pops this guy back out. I know that's kind of, might be a little vague to understand if <laughs> you've never done this before, but I'm not going to actually show the operation because YouTube took down all of my videos. I had a very detailed series of videos about how to put one of these together and YouTube took almost all of it down. So I took the rest of it down because it didn't make any sense. So that's why. The other tool that I would recommend investing in is this guy right here. So it's kind of like a little roll pin. Let's see if I can get the to focus. But it's flat on one side. And what that allows you to do is punch your bolt release. So that's your bolt release right there. And it is held in place with a roll pin. Get the light on it. There we go. And this allows you, you can kind of work it either way. But this mates up flat to the lower like so. And it's just, it makes life easier than trying to use a regular, you can do it with a regular like round roll pin. This just makes it a little easier. And it's, they're like nine or 10 bucks or something. And it's just, it's worth doing. Uh, you can also approach it from the other direction and knock your pin in that way. So depending on kind of what your setup is, you may be, you may find it easier to put like a book or something on a hard surface. And before you have installed your buffer tube, you would knock it in that way. So anyway, I'm already on the, on the bleeding edge of what may or may not be allowed to be shown. But these are the two tools I would recommend investing in if you're going to assemble a lower. The rest of it, uh, let's see, you will need a wrench, an AR type wrench, probably to get your castle nut on. And then you can either like take it somewhere and have it properly staked or get yourself a ratcheting castle nut system like this one from Primary Weapon Systems. Then you won't even need that. You just use the wrench, tighten it down. It locks itself into place. Uh, again, that's an advantage of just building your own lower. 
is you don't have to buy this twice. Just get yourself the primary weapons systems, Ratchet and Castle Nut. I think some other people are making them now, but well worth the investment not to have to try to stake it yourself if you're brand new to all this stuff. I referred to this as a roll pin. It's a roll pin punch. I Hopefully that was self-evident. It's 95 degrees in here right now, and I am not reshooting that segment. So <laughs> you can spare me running down to the comments to correct me. I, I, I got it. I heard it. But anyway, <laughs> this thing has come in handy over and over and over again. Now, some of the newer, like, arrow offerings are going to have a hex screw-in option instead of, in fact, a roll pin won't even fit in there. So it's closed on the other end. It'll, you'll figure it out. Anyway, if it's a regular mil spec lower, get one of these. So that is where I am on your first AR is build out your lower by the assembled upper. Make life easy on yourself. Again, I, I, I have to repeat that I have seen new builders over and over and over come running to forums about, oh, my barrel nut didn't, I didn't torque it right. I don't know what's going on. It's really, really, really common. And if you are having problems cycling, it's generally going to be something wrong with the upper and not the lower. So I'm also going to take a minute and remind everyone that if you are building out a lower, the LaRue meticulously built trigger, still dollar for dollar, the best value out there. They are so, so good and like a half or a third the cost of a comparable Geisley or something like that. It's not a cassette style, meaning it's not all pre-assembled, but they're so good. So just throwing that out there. No, I'm not paid by anybody to say that. It's just experience has taught me that that is a really, really solid product for the money. At, at any cost, they're great, but they're, they're a great value. And the money you save on that can be put into nicer other parts on your build. So definitely do your homework. Take your time. Give yourself months to assemble a lower. Don't try to race it all together in a week or two or something because there's a high likelihood that the thing you want may be out of stock. You may have trouble sourcing it. Just be patient. You're going to own this thing for a lifetime. Don't try to put it together in a week. Give yourself lots and lots of time. There are still some videos available floating around here, but you may need to go just regular old Google foo and you know, there are still like blog articles and stuff showing step-by-step step exactly how to put one together. I wish mine hadn't been taken down, but here we are. So that is all I got for this one, y'all. Build your lower, buy your upper, get a decent, get the best optic. Again, optic, we'll, we'll get into that later, but don't buy the cheapest optic out there. S save. If it takes you a little longer, that's fine, but get something decent. Buy once, cry once, y'all. That's all I got for this one. Until next time, be easy, y'all.